And welcome back to Under Center with Kirk Cousins, and our special in-studio guest is Adam Thielen, wide receiver. And Adam, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, let's start with um, after the game, and we'll take it from there, and I'll let you fill in the blanks here. Uh, you uh, did an interview after the game against the Bears, and your exec quote was, at some point you're not going to be able to run the ball for 180 yards. Even with the best running back in the NFL, that's when you have to be able to throw the ball, you have to be able to hit the deep balls. Uh what uh, would you like to elaborate on that quote? Yeah, I think it's first of all, I think it's I think it's interesting how media or fans take things that you say and make it what they want it to be. Um, I think I don't think I could say anything more generic that any offense would say. Um, you can't be one dimensional in this league. It's very, very, very difficult to win. Um, if you listen to defensive coordinators talk, they want to make the offense one dimensional, and that's how they want that's how they want to win. And so what I was saying was, and I think it's pretty clear what I said, is, is you can't just expect to win every single game in this league by running the football. Some games you're going to be able to do that, um, and we've done that, right? Um, but at the end of the day, to, to go to where we want to go, I think we are going to have to be able to move the ball by throwing the football. And again, after the, you know, in that interview, I talked about the first thing you do after a game is you look yourself in the mirror and you say, what could have I done better? Um, is there plays that I didn't give full effort on? Is there plays that I could have ran a better route, um, got open quicker, things like that? So um, that's what I that's what I did today, and and I'm ready now to move forward to New York. Kirk, did you take offense to that quote at all? No, like you said, uh, it's reality, and uh, I really want to apologize to him because there's too many opportunities where we could have hit him on Sunday. And post-game, when I talk to the media, I always say, hey, until I watch the film, it's hard for me to really give you a straight answer. Well, now it's Tuesday night. I've watched the film. And the reality is there were opportunities for him. I, the one that's most obvious is the third and 10 at the beginning of the game. We're near midfield. That's arguably seven points. If you put the ball where it needs to be, we, he's shown, number 19's shown, that he will make that play. And he'll probably finish the play in the end zone and pull away from the defender. Um, you know, Adam's not just a really good player or one of the best players on the Vikings. He's one of the best players in the NFL, one of the best players in the world, period, regardless of position. And so, uh, you know, we we want to, we need to, and when I say we really, I mean I need to get him more opportunities, get him the football. Uh, there's a couple others that I go back and watch it, a dagger, a corner post, a fade throw in the end zone, where I can make it easier on him, give him opportunities. Um, yes, was the, was the Bears front seven really good? Yes, did they make plays in, in the back end occasionally? Yes. But, uh, you know, I didn't help things with, uh, with, you know, giving him more opportunities. So if we run the ball successfully, if we run the ball more consistently, so be it. But when we do take our shots or we have our chances, we got to hit them. And uh, the reality was I didn't. We didn't. And, um, and that's where I think you're frustrated after a game and, uh, and you're looking to improve going into the next week. But uh, um, that's really my summary on it, and I, I look forward to giving him and Stefan more opportunities you know, in the weeks ahead. What are the, the discussions like in the sidelines uh, between series? Uh, you guys are always looking at your, your um, iPads or whatever you, your, that you have, but what are those conversations like between you and the receivers and, mm-hmm. and Kevin Stefanski? Well, I don't like to right? over-communicate it, and so I try to say, look, if we know what happened, I don't need to go over there and you know talk just to talk. So I try to you know, when I do talk, it's because of something needs to be said, you know, and where there's confusion. And really, I think there hasn't been a lot of confusion except for, hey, I think he can give me a chance there. I mean, he says to me on the corner post yesterday when I checked it down to Alex, um, I think he got me there. You know, and that's the kind of honest dialogue that you want to have where it's candor and it's it's healthy and I want to hear that. And and so, but yeah, Adam, what's your perspective on the sideline? Yeah, well, I think there's a few things. So I think... <laughs> um, um, you know, as a receiver, you don't see the pass rush. You're just running your route. You feel like you're open, and it's frustrating, right? Um, you're, I'm an emotional player. I think anybody who has any success in this league has emotion when they play this game. And so I think, for me, I've really tried to um, hold that frustration in, hold that emotion in. So when I get to the sideline, I go sit by myself. I let myself calm down a little <laughs> bit. And then, and, then I, and then I try to focus on, on what I can do um, on that next series. Because... Because reality says you're not going to be able to change what happened. 
in the past of that game. So trying to figure out the best way to um, show your teammates that you're dialed into the next the next series, uh, that you're that you're confident that we can move the ball. Um, so that's something I've really tried to focus on as a late as a young player. I was very emotional on the sidelines, um, but uh, like I said, I, I'm really trying to make sure that. Because, because at the end of the day, that does that does no good. It doesn't do good personally. Because then you, you're not thinking about the next plays, um, and it does no good for your teammates. Because they see that it might it might frustrate them, things like that. So um, it's an emotional game. It's it's very difficult uh, to to hold those emotions. But at the end of the day, uh, that's what's best for the team. The people misinterpret that emotion sometimes. Yeah, for sure. The game. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't think, and Kirk can attest to this, that if you haven't played this game and you haven't played it at a high level, you have no idea um, what goes into it. The preparation, um, you know, the hard work, the, you know, we, we bust our tail, um, OTAs, mini camp, training camp, and then you get to these, you have 16 opportunities, and you have four quarters in each one of those opportunities to show what you can do and, and to show all that work. So I think, I think there's just so much emotion because of that, of how hard you work. So for me, it... it you know, I just think that you have to have emotion to play this game, but at the same time, you have to learn how to, to handle that emotion and turn it into a positive. We, go ahead, Kirk. I, I look forward to, to finding that balance the rest of the year where, yeah, we're probably not going to run for 200 yards a game, but I look forward to being a team that we know we can move it on the ground, and then if teams are going to take that away, we say, okay, let's go, and let's push the ball vertically down the field, throwing it to some really good playmakers, and now – you start to do that, defenses, you know, don't know what to do. And I, I look forward to putting it all together because I think last year we showed we can push the ball down the field vertically. I think this year early we've showed we can we can really pound it. But like Adam said, some games it's not going to be one or it's not going to be the other, and you have to be ready to play the hand that you're dealt week, week to week. And um, I think we are still trying to find that way to put it all together where no matter what the team wants to take away that we're playing – we have the answer to complement it, and we're going to execute in such a way that, that we get it done. In your two victories at U.S. Bank, dominating early starts, Adam, uh, again, run-centric in terms of what Dalvin Cook's been able to do the offensive line. Is there a sense that you're getting the flow of the game? You're not getting the ball maybe as much as you'd like or in, the, in a perfect world, but you're okay with it because you're seeing the results on the scoreboard. Yeah, and that's, that's at the end of the day, we play this game to win. And um, as long as you're winning, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I have zero catches or 100 catches. Um, I want to win. And I think that's the, that's the cool thing about this team. Everybody in that locker room wants to win. They don't care about individual stats. They don't care about going to a Pro Bowl, things like that. We want to win because at the end of the day, it it's really is not fun to, to lose in this league. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Mondays rece- are not fun. <laughs> but by nature, wide receivers, uh, we've had a bunch of them here, uh, for lack of a better word, have kind of a diva feel to them. I mean, you know that's the case. Guys have been concerned about their stats, making pro balls. Maybe they get incentives with their contracts. So it doesn't always go hand in hand with the position that you play. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, it, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about before. Like, if you don't have emotion when you play this game, it's it's going to be very difficult to play well. But it's how you handle those emotions. So yes, yeah, you want the ball. You want the football because your competitor, uh, you want to help this team win. And, and if you don't have that in you, you're probably not going to be very successful in the field. But it's how you handle that, how you go about your business. And, uh, you know, at, like I said, at the end of the day, it's about the W. And I, I feel when I sense the passion and emotion from Dixie and Adam, what's behind it is, Kirk, I can't help us win if I'm not getting the ball. And that's not diva. That's a deep passion to help a team win. And that's where it comes from. That's ultimately the root source of it is, man, if, you know, I'm, I got a chance here to help us win, but the ball's got to come my way. And, uh, and I look back and I say, you're right. I mean, you're 100% right. Yes, there are a couple times where the protection breaks down and you guys don't sense that. And so, yeah, we're not going to bat a thousand. But, uh, but most of the time, it's, you're right. When you have a game like you did Sunday in Chicago, uh, there is, uh, even though your record is two and two, there, there seems to be a, the sky is falling feeling on the outside looking inside of this building uh, how, how do you isolate yourself from the noise outside when you're going about your business now getting ready for the next game against the Giants in New York on Sunday yeah I mean I think I think you just you go and you focus on the things that you can control um, I think I think it, you really find out what team you you have after a loss like that and and how are we going to prepare this week how are we going to practice 
Um, we'll find out on Wednesday what kind of mindset this team has because if guys are flying around and and uh, doing everything they can effort wise and, and and preparing, that's when you know you have something special. Uh, and uh, I think those are the type of guys we have in this room. Uh, you know everybody's frustrated, and and you can go one of either way, one of two ways. You can have it, the locker room fall apart, or you guys can or you can come together. You bust your tail, you go to work, and you try to figure out how to help this team win. I think what's interesting is in the NFC, no team is 4-0. So at best, the people we're chasing have one more win than we do. We're 2-2, two two, they're 3-1. Now, I'm not saying that to say that you know we're fine, we're good. We, the way we played on Sunday, we got to be better. But the reality is the sky isn't falling. There's 12 games in the regular season left to write the story. And Oakland came in here last week, and we beat them in such a way that I think they probably felt this guy was falling. They go on the road this past Sunday and win. And they're 2-2. Two and two. And so you realize that, you know, it, it, it's a long journey. Yes, I understand fans have emotion as well, and they're going to react in such a way where it's really frustrating to watch your team go into Soldier Field and not get a W and not play it up at a level that we're capable of. But uh, when you start to look at facts and you start to look at reality – you can you can see it in a way that's encouraging and gives you a reason to get up Wednesday morning and work your tail off to get ready to go beat the Giants. And, and Adam, when you think about uh, where this team is at right now, it is only four weeks into the season. So you're saying, well, see how, see how this team reacts on Wednesday. If this was week 12 or week 13, maybe that would be more of a, a critical part. But you think this is a critical week going on the road again, uh, trying to prove your mettle uh, against a, an NFC opponent because you don't want to fall too behind, too far behind in that situation either. Yeah, I think it's just a, it's a great opportunity to show what we can do. Uh, you have 16 opportunities to show what kind of football player you are, what kind of offense you are, what kind of team you are. And this is another great opportunity on the road, uh, a, a bounce-back game to show, show that we are capable of, of doing some of these things that helps, helps your team win. So uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to get back, back on the field on Wednesday and go to practice because uh, all you want to do after a loss is just get back on the field and uh, start playing football again. So just to clarify one more time, your quote after the game yesterday, your interview you did, wasn't directed at the quarterback, wasn't directed at the offensive coordinator, was it just directed in general at what this team needs to do to, to figure out how to win Yeah, I think consistently? I think it was in general for any offense in the NFL. Um, I, think, I think any offense that's being real is going to say the exact same thing. You have, to, you have to hit deep balls, number one, because otherwise corners sit on you. You have to be able to run the football when you need to, and you have to be able to throw the football because, like Kirk said, some games are going to dictate that, that you have to throw the ball to win. Some games are going to dictate that you have to run the ball to win, and it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you are doing the things you need to do to win. So, um, like I said, it was, it was as general as I could have got, but obviously um, you know, people will find a way to twist it and, and make controversy and try to split your team. Um, so uh, we're, we're not going to let that, that happen. You go home and uh... – you got a couple of kids that keep you hopping. Um, life is uh, life is just moves on. You kind of separate all that because you got a, a great family you get to go home to. Yeah, I'm very blessed, um, very fortunate that God has put uh, that in my life because it makes it a lot easier after a loss to be able to go home. Uh, and my uh, three year old could care less if I won or lost or how many catches I had. So <laughs> um, it's it's fun to be able to go home and and see them and 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 you know play football with him and play baseball. I think he's uh, more into baseball than anything right now, so it's, it's pretty fun. And you mentioned Adam being a Minnesota guy. You're you're rooting for the Twins, obviously, against those damn yeah, Yankees. Yeah, here we and go. Guys, right. You'll be in New York this weekend. but There's a Yankees fan uh, here. Uh, you're, you're probably not going to be able to sneak away, I assume, on Saturday night to catch game two. Maybe Coach Zimmer may uh, give you a special permission There have permission been some whispers. <laughs> or are We're you? tempted. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited. Kirk and I have been talking about it. We, we kind of want to get a group together and go Monday night uh, uh, when they're at home, but... Uh, Super excited, you know. It, you know, obviously, growing up in Minnesota, being a Minnesota sports fan, um, it's always fun to see playoff. You know, of any professional. Sport, Tell them about you know, your so. grandpa watching the Twins. Yeah, and that's another great point. Uh, Kirk and I always talk about uh, just you know fun facts about each other. You know, and and uh, I was telling him that my grandpa, I don't think, ever missed a Twins game. Really, there's 162 a year, and and <laughs> for the last probably five years of his life. 160 games. He watched 160 games, but he probably watched all of them twice because they played replay the next day at like noon. <laughs> oh. You know, 
And so That's my dedication. Grandpa, yeah, so my grandpa, every time I'd get go to visit him, you know, Twins game would be on the background. It wouldn't be live. It'd be on replay. And uh, But, yeah, he, he didn't miss a game. So um, it's kind of fun to, I guess, uh, you know, he's not here anymore and, and uh, to, to carry that tradition and, and uh, support the team. But those guys at least have a series to play, three out of five. Uh, unlike football, where it's, you're one and done if you, have, if you get in that situation. So maybe it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, and the Yankees kind of have had our number over the years. So yeah, that's an understatement. It's uh, it's it's kind of cool though. I'm, I'm glad that we got the Yankees because um, this team this year has been so fun to watch. The way that they hit home runs and um, you know, it, it, the it seems like they have a really uh, close knit group. Uh, you can see them having fun in the dugout and and doing that stuff, which I think is is probably the coolest thing about sports is the brotherhood you form, uh, the relationships you make, and and. There's nothing better than winning with those brothers, so uh, pretty cool to watch. Go Twins. We'll be watching. It's, <laughs> it's fun, you know. You have a long day at work and go home and turn on playoff baseball. I've always enjoyed that in the fall, especially when it's your, your local team playing. Yeah, it's going to be a special weekend, that is for sure, and uh, especially playing New York. And they've had, uh, they have had the Twins number, but it's like anything else, like any other NFL roster or Major League Baseball. They say, well, we haven't played well against that team, but a lot of those guys weren't there. Most of those guys weren't there when the Twins have had their issues with the Yankees or whatever the case may be. So they don't care about the history, the past failures that they've had. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually, to you know, hear um, you know, fans' perspective um, people that have been watching the team for so long, you know, s- talk about those things. But, but in reality, like rosters, like you said, change so much from year to year that, um, you know, it's a totally different team. And uh, but it's still cool to obviously have that tradition and and uh, and all that. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, like the Twins. I mean, they're a completely different team this year than they were last year. Uh, and and hopefully the, that's a good thing, and we can take down those Yankees. <laughs> so now that we look ahead to the Giants, uh, the head coach of the Giants, Pat Shermer, um, was your coach. Pat went to Michigan State, and so I've been around him a little bit. He came around East Lansing when I was playing there a couple of times. He had been a coach in the NFL during that span. Um, you know, a couple of times I'll see him in warm-ups pregame when we play his teams, and we talk about the Spartans, but I don't know him like you do. Talk about your memories with Coach Shermer, your experience with him. You won a lot of games together, um, and obviously I believe he was the play caller in what has been kind of your coming up years and, and your kind of coming out party. Yeah, no, I'm 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 super excited to go to see Pat this uh, this this weekend, and um, you know he was obviously like you said uh, so influential in, in my career, and really uh, gave me a lot of opportunities to do what I do well, and um, kind of had a lot of trust and belief and, and faith in me to uh, perform. So um, it'll be great to see him. He's such a great guy too. You know, we've had so many conversations. I remember uh, every day at lunch he'd come sit sit by me, and we would talk mm. about random things, not even not even cl- anything about football. Um, you know, his son played at Vanderbilt, and we'd always talk about their games the weekend before. And uh, so I had a great relationship with him, and it would be great to see him. I mean, that's, that's the cool part about the NFL is you, you start to – the longer you're in this league, you start to meet guys, and um, you start to get to know them on a personal level, and whether it be coaches, players. And uh, it's, just, it's just a really unique thing, and it's, it's so cool, the brotherhood. And um, everybody's going through the same thing, and, and uh, it's just really cool. I mean, seeing Cordero this weekend – uh, I was texting with him after the game, and I, I miss that guy because uh, he was another guy that's such a, a big part of of my career. You know, he he helped me out so much in, in so many different ways, and we were roommates for four years on on the road. So uh, <laughs> definitely miss that guy. It's just it's just a it's a unique thing. It just doesn't happen in in other other uh, professions. Can you find that magic elixir that has served you so well at home, getting off those two great starts to take that on the road with you one of these weeks? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it just comes down to a fast start. I mean, I mean, this team is built to start fast. If we can start fast and let our defense do what they do really well, um, we can have a lot of success. So, um, again, it just comes down to focusing on, on what you can do this week to help, help your offense, help your team get better, and ultimately help your team win. So um, that's what we're going to do. Awesome. Adam, thanks so much for coming on. Let's get back to work this week and get a W on Sunday. All righty. Appreciate it.